second semester, even third, like it's really hard for us in the beginning how to uh, really incorporate this to our clinical. But when you are in the clinical area, you will really appreciate that how important dosage calculation is. So what is dosage calculation? So um, no matter what's your initial after your name, either you are a registered nurse on an LPN or an NA, you will encounter uh, uh, you will encounter math on a daily basis. Uh, if you know how to, you know, the medical math basics like trying to solve the math problems or even the simple conversion factors, it will really help you in your uh, daily tasks, especially in a uh, for example, my area, uh, my unit right now, I'm working in orthopedic unit, so it's really fast-paced. So it's much better if you know the, the techniques on how to just, you know, uh, decrease your time, rather than computing you know, everything. So uh, the first outcome we're focused is the nurse skills, intake and output, and the weight and height. So it's basic math, I think you guys had this already. So under this, you will encounter a lot of whole numbers, fraction, decimals. But I just want to uh, emphasize more on decimals because like, based on my experience too, like, for some reason, like, I, I keep switching it and not using it properly. Like, for example, 1.5, usually uh, it's called uh, 1 and 5 tenths. And then if you're going to go on uh, the hundreds, it's going to be like 1.55. And then on the thousands would be 1.55 or 1.555. So tens, hundreds, and thousands. I usually switch it before. So uh, this is the proper way of reading the decimal. And then just on your own knowledge, which is the smallest number among these choices? This one on 0.4 or 0.2? It's point smaller yeah. number? Yeah, it's smaller number. Point, point two. <laughs> yeah, it's point two. And then on this choice, like uh, point zero one. Zero, 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 yeah. And then, yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know your uh, basic algebra then. So this is another example of decimals. Like, uh, basically, because like, my is focused on intake and output. So we're going to be focused on adding, subtracting, probably some multiplication and division. But for decimal, uh, this is going to be the main principle, uh, just uh, with the decimal. And the other one, just add everything. And subtracting is the same thing, too. But it's a different situation on uh, multiplying decimals and dividing. So yeah. Some, some nurses Try have to cover the system of measurement and common equivalence. So when we're trying to read mass volume, like we read like this, like we commonly use micrograms, milligrams, grams, and kilograms. If we're going, uh, if we're going heavier or the mass is bigger, then we usually like divide it by 1,000. If we're going uh, lesser, then we have to times it by 1,000. And then the same thing with uh, pounds and kilograms. So for pounds, if you want to go kilograms, then you have to divide it by 2.2 all the time, 2.2. And then going to pounds, just multiply it by 2.2. With volume, the same thing too. We have uh, uh, M MCL, ML, liter, and kiloliter. So if you're going up, the same principle, like divided by 1,000, and then going lesser would be multiplied by 1,000. So this is an example. If you want to convert uh, 5,000 microgram to milligram, so as shown before, microgram, milligram, gram, and kilogram. So if you're trying to go uh, uh, up, so you have to divide it by five, 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 sorry, by 1,000. So 5,000 microgram divided 1,000 is equivalent to five milligram. So that's gonna be the milligram per 5,000 microgram. And then an example for, uh, for the weight, we have this uh, 44 pounds per kilogram. So that's the same thing, you're going kilograms, so you have to divide it by 2.2. Uh, 2. So uh, the solution would be 44 pounds, divide 2.2, and it's going to be like 20 kilograms. And then um, the same thing too from 
converting from uh, from liter and going down, so you have to multiply by 1,000. So we have 0 0.003 liters times 1,000, so you will be getting 3 uh, ml of 3 milliliter. So this is another uh, me measuring system that we use. The, the green, one green is equivalent to 60 milligrams, so rule of thought, what goes in must come out. It's really important that we have to follow this because like for some cases like we have patients who have congested heart failure or having pneumonia. We don't really want our patient to be overloading with fluids in their body. And if that happens, then we can recommend to our primary nurse or charge nurse or even the physician to uh, remove the fluid by Lasix or and, uh, other examples. So these are the common uh, types of intake and output. For intake, we have oral fluids, IV, uh, what they call the cipher alimentation or TPN feeding, tube feeding, and medication. Uh, this is usually go to your vein, and then tube feeding example is NGT, all those things. And then type of output, we have urine, common one, vomit, blood drainage, like, uh, uh, what do you call this? Yeah, blood drainage, loose tool, NG tube drainage, and perspiration. So height and weight. So it's, we all know what's uh, height and weight, but I, I just want to illiterate how important it is, uh, especially if we have pediatric clients. So we have to have specific uh, weight so that we can calculate the drug properly. But um, right now, um, one of my basis is for the nutrition too. So for height, it's most often used as a nutritional index. If it's possible, if they are malnourished or obese or something like that. So, and then we can also use this to record the uh, calculated uh, body mass index, which I will show the, the formula. Also for the weight, weight is an extensive use of nutritional measurement, both in the assessment and the monitoring. Has a number of well-recognized limitations. And an, ac an accurate measurement requires regularly calibrated and maintained scale capable of accommodating patients who are confined to bed. And one thing that I'm just gonna tell you guys, like I, I, I think it's been discussed in Nursing Foundation 1 too, like if you weigh your patient, always on the same time, same clothes, as much as possible, and same um, weighing scale, yeah. So uh, this is an example for, um, like, uh, for the body surface area. Um, this is an estimation on weight alone itself. So if the patient, mostly of the example is 30, uh, from zero to 30 kilograms, so it's more focused on kids or pediatric. So if you have zero to five kilograms, this is a specific formula that you're gonna use. And then for six to 10, 11 to 20, and 21 to 30, have their specific uh, values and formula. So for example, there's a 25 kilogram child uh, would have an estimate of body surface of what? Since it's 25, so it's, yeah, it's belong to a 0 0.02. So you just have to use this uh, uh, value and formula. So, uh, it's gonna be 0 0.02 times 25 plus 0 0.4 is equivalent to 0 0.9. Uh, squared, M squared. So the amount of drug containing each dose, this value will be found in the drug weight. So that's 20 milligrams is the dose in hand. So 20 milligrams. So what is um, dosage unit? Dosage unit? No, it's the capsule. The oh. cap dosage unit, the units by which drug will be measured when it is administered. This value will be found on the drug label. So that it can be capsule, it can be one ml, it can be tablet, uh, drops, or units. That's the dosage unit. Remember that. Because like for your exam, like you have to read the label and you have to calculate. So and what is the dosage trend or the concentration? Yeah. So twenty milligram per capsule. So dosage trend is the dose in hand per dosage unit. This value can be determined from drug label. In this figure, 20 milligrams per capsule. So dosage order is that the prescription by the 
position, like it can be 20 milligram, like you can see the doctor's order, like you know, it's given. Okay, now so we have the basic formula. Everybody knows this, mm -hmm. the A, the H over, uh, the H, that's the first one. So for this example, uh, metropolol, loprosol, 25 milligram PO is ordered. Metropolol is available as 50 milligram tablets. How many tablets would the nurse administer? Half a tablet. 0.5. So it's very basic. 25 milligram over 50 milligram would be 0.5 tablet. Okay. So and the next uh, formula is the DH times B is equal to amount to get. So for this example, uh, the cardiac patient is to receive card cardizem 5 milligram IV piggyback. The vial contains 10 milligram per 2 ml. How many ml do you give? One. 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 So do you know how to yeah. check your answer if it's right or not? Mm -hmm. First. How? I'll show you like there's a technique like I've been using this because I, I don't use really formula. I always use like uh, this proportion method. So I'll show you. So the given is 5 milligrams. So um, the vial contains 10 milligram per 2 ml. For 2 ml. So what is asking? They're asking for ml. Put it over x. Yes, over x. And so the make sure if you use this uh, formula, make sure that it's same unit. Numerator or like same unit and then same unit. So this is what I do. I did this. 10 milligram over 2 ml. It's five, right? Okay, so this is what I do. Like if, if this is missing, if the denominator is missing, I always divide the numerator. So five divided by five. One. one. So this is your x. Five divided by one. Five. five. So this is balance. So you know your answer is right. So do you want more example? <laughs> No. So it can be like, uh, if this is missing, uh, if this is missing the 5 milligram, the numerator, what you're going to do is you, ha you just have to multiply. So 5 times 1 is 5. So if this is uh, missing, so you just divide the numerator. So how I remember this, like, so like in our body, let's up and down. So this part is divide. <laughs> this part multiply. <laughs> That's how I remember <laughs> Okay, next, please. Okay, same question. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing. So you can use DH times V, but I always use this just to make sure my answer is right. So at the same time, I'm checking the answer. So the given is pentoin dilantin 80 milligram PO is ordered to be given through nasogastric tube. Penitone is available as 40 milligram per, per 5 ml. How many ml would the nurse administer? So the given is 80 milligram and 40 milligram per 5 ml. Okay, I'll do this. And we are uh, asking for ml. So x is equal to ml. So let's, we're going to divide. Eight. Eight. What we're gonna do? Eight. Up. Let's divide, right? Mm -hmm. Eight. Eight divided by eight. eight. Ten. Ten. Divide. Right. Eight divided by ten. Eight. 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 So it's balanced. So you know if your answer is right. So that's how I do the proportion. Mm -hmm. But the same. Okay. But in your DNH is easy. But sometimes, like if it's more complicated by a third semester. Like oh B and H, some things you cannot use. Better to use this proportion, so you know you're checking your answer if it's right. At the same time, you're checking it. Okay, next is dosage by weight. So the formula is weight in kilogram, dosage per kilogram. I know you're taking this already in pharmacology. So the given here is. Solomedrol 1.5 milligram per kilogram is ordered for a child weighing 30 kilograms. Solomedrol is available as, as 125 milligram per 2 ml.
how many ml must the nurse administer? So what we're gonna do first? Yeah. So if you see the kilogram and then there's a milligram per kilogram, we always multiply it first. So that's dosage rate. Dosage by weight. So weight is 33 kilograms. You multiply with 1.5 milligram per kilogram. Then you have to cancel it out. You need milligram. So what's gonna be the answer? Yeah. 49.5. We're not done yet because they're asking for how many ml. So what we're gonna do next? So this, this time we're gonna do pH. So because I already show you the other formula. So even it's 125 times 15. Yeah, times two. Point eight. Yeah, zero point seven nine. And clear the dosage. And the consequence of getting the wrong dosage could be very serious. It's life threatening. Here are some facts. That's like about twenty four thousand deaths like yearly in acute care setting set yeah. in the same time. Whoever get it right, we have price to give to you. Are you all good? Do you know why the instructor asked the student to calculate the dosage rate? Because she's saying it administers 650 milligrams four times a day, every, or sorry, every four hours, or day. Um, so six, six times six is 3,600. Uh, you cannot see 4,000. So uh, close to 4,000, yeah. Yeah, so she's within the safe dose, but she's not. She has not. She's uh, not within the safe dose, so she needs to acknowledge that. You think it's not in safe dose? It is. It is. It is. It is. She has it's not. 13 she has times 2,600. Like a 650 milligram tab every four hours. Four hours, so. That's six uh, times a day. Like how many times? Six, six, six times. times. So, so what's the total? Three thousand. 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 Calculating how much the patient is getting. When we do the dosage calculation, does we only consider the number? No. Or just do all math skills? Do we need to consider other factors? No. Yes, what's missing here? What the dosage comes from? Tablet. 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 No. no. Is the patient then an adult or child? Oh. <laughs> you know? No. You don't know. Or if yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so when we consider the when safe dosage rate, you need to think about the regard the patient as a whole. You not just look at the number. You think of how old the patient. Is patient an adult or a child? If, if the patient is a child, what's the weight? What's the weight of a child? Because we need the weight to calculate the safe dosage. Right? <coughs> does it make sense? Yep. Also, does the patient have any liver function problem, like liver failure? You know the, the, uh, the side effect of Tylenol? It's causing like, uh, damage to your liver, right? So, you need to consider other factors too. Right? Does it make sense? Yeah. So, you didn't look like take a look at the uh, lab results uh, where all the liver and rats in the normal range. 
Even you get the right dosage, you have to think about it. Does this medication good for this client? If, if, if the patient has like liver damage very badly, do you still give the medication? No. Yeah. So need, you need to think about all this kind of stuff. You also need to calculate what the maximum of dosing in, within 24 hours. So the reason why the instructor asked the student to calculate the dosing, so do you understand now? Yep. So I have made survey and interview among the nursing students uh, in, in, at our school. And uh, even though you can achieve like 100% in your math test, doesn't mean you can like get 100% in your clinic or in your future like working place. Can you promise? Does anyone say that? Yes. I cannot promise. I, I won't make any calculation error in uh, my future career. Can you? No. We, we need to deal with all kinds of problems. We face all kinds of barriers. So, like eight of them come, uh, come up to like top barriers for the students in the in clinic to get the right dosage. Stressful environment and distraction come at the top. Like you see. So you have to learn how to deal with all kinds of uh, environment and also I continue to do the survey among uh, our students too because our project is not done yet even with video presentation we still continue with the project, project. so your par participation is still very important to us uh, general recommendation so first one implement study that helped to identify student numerous skills for this, our robotic college did, uh, is doing a very good job. Like, uh, we have uh, lots of mass tests. We have very expe uh, high expectations. We need to achieve like 90% to have the course, right? And we also have lots of uh, tutors to have students. And in, in our skill test, foundation two, foundation three, we integrate the dosage calculation into the skill test <coughs> next to real time. And also, yeah, all this can help you like uh, strengthen your, your, your skills. What we are doing is always like help everybody be more aware of the importance of calculation, the competency. A numeracy is an issue of accountability. If you does it wrong, you do it wrong, that's your you have to take the responsibility. We also need to acknowledge of the impact of dem demographic issues such as age, gender, ethnicities, etc. So for the facilities, we need to reduce in patient nurse ratio, reduce work hours because you you are so exhausted, your mind doesn't work, so it, it also causes some problems. I want to mention increasing the team communication. When are you in a real situation, sometimes you are not so sure you got it right, you have to ask for help. If you, you're not sure, always ask for help and double check with other uh, uh, people. And we also need some skills to coping with our environment. What should we do as nursing students to success in safety calculation? I want to mention that all ways of members seven rights to carry out safe medication station. Seven rights, I think everybody knows. Yeah. So always, always seven rights. If you do the seven rights, like uh, consistently, it can prevent lots of many errors. So many uh, many errors happen. I think every many error related to one right. You didn't do it, do it properly. So I also like always check, check, and check. Check those order carefully. Read the whole order carefully, and check not those given in the case of pain medication in those range, and check vital signs in case of narcotic. So you not just do mass calculation. You have to 
look at uh, the patient, all information. Check max dosage, like Tylenol. Uh, this one I already mentioned. Check drug monograph, especially for IV drug. Check frequency. Is daily, is BID, TID, QID, or one time dose. And check the never rather result. Here are some uh, online resources. Those two are totally free. You can get some uh, pain and uh, like, uh, medication information for totally free. Mm -hmm. And these are uh, two quizzes. They come with uh, answers. We will post uh, our PowerPoint to the ETL. If you are interested, you can just go to the website and uh, warm up your uh, math skills. <laughs> we will post it on the ETL. Thank you. November 8, 2013 at 10.30, 10, we, we discussed our learning outcomes to the 35-45 students of Merchant Foundation 2 in semester 2. Uh, basically, we have three outcomes. We, anyway, I'm going to uh, introduce myself first and I'm Alvin Cruz. This is Chun Wong Si and this is Jack Paul Rivera. We are the group 8. So, we have three outcomes. The first outcome is numeracy regarding um, intake and output and height and weight basically they are, these are important especially like for admission and for patient with CHF we do intake and output and then for height and weight we did for admission so okay so for the second outcome is le uh, learning two outcome is applying knowledge in mathematical formula used in drug calculation and the third outcome is integrate the numeracy skills into consistency in calculations of drug dosages Okay, so we have like uh, implemented strategies. First, we have a survey. Prior to our presentation, we did the survey to the um, students. Um, we have also open questions. While we are doing our presentation, we ask them questions like, so what's their point of view? Um, we also use critical thinking or key studies examples, so to, to facilitate them for better understanding about the, you know, the doses calculation and the numeracy skills, numeracy skills and we also have pictures and handouts so they can our like basic formula so they can see so like the, like the basic formula is easy to remember so easy to use and we also use um, examples on the board and I, I like we we explain everything and then how they can uh, learn the formula in a easy way that's what I taught them and for what we have learned and topic to discuss about it. Uh, so good morning everyone. Uh, so basically what we have learned as a group from this presentation, uh, we were able to discuss about numeracy, but most of all we were able to discuss about the importance of numeracy. As we have all known, we are ready. For us, we're a fourth semester practical nurse student. We know how important it is to know numeracy. It, can cause your it can cause harm or even death to your patient if you don't know you know the proper drug calculation for specific you know, uh, medication. It is also important for us like to learn about communication. As for us, like we have to communicate with our instructors, specifically in nursing foundation too, so that we can have the class and able to present to them, able to communicate with the students in a clear, simple, and understandable manner so that they can understand what we we're talking about and even communication with each of us as a team. Because uh, in our situation, we have different schedule to do our presentership, so it's really important for us to communicate properly so that we can have a proper presentation. Working as a team, uh, as a group, I find my group name to be really, really cooperative and really helpful and it's a big plus plus for us and it was a really really good experience working in a different um, multidisciplinary team like working with nursing attendant with registered nurse with doctors like it's really, really important for us to work together and we did like uh, nurse uh, numeracy is part part in this uh, in this work environment 
if anyone has any problem with it, it can cause some problems with it. So challenges that we encountered, as I mentioned before, there's some problem with time or schedule, schedule-wise. We have different schedule in perceptorship, so it's really hard for us, so we really have to organize and you know, uh, get the time frame for us to meet. We even use uh, Skype as another form to communicate. Uh, equipment, so there was um, uh, another challenge with equipment, so there's new projector and computer in the North building, so it was different from what we had in the South, so it was, you know, we were, took us a long time to able to, you know, um, connect everything and uh, use it properly, but uh, the thing is like we were able to use it and we were able to present our university constant project. Participation, so I noticed like some students were, you know, not participating, like example in our surveys, it's really hard to ask students for a short survey when they're not really interested. And another example is in class, like even though 98% or 99% of our students were really interested and really like we're on a continuous con uh, communication, but there, you know, of course there's some students who, you know, in terms of participation or interest, like they don't really belong to it. And how we deliver our message, so we did, as a group, we did plan how we present our presentation and my 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 experience or like uh, like my idea regarding about it like we really did good well probably just shorten the time a little bit but overall we did really good with our presentation so uh, I'm gonna move you next to my uh, groupmate yeah. Shun Rong so she's gonna be discussing about final outcome conclusion mm -hmm. and very good yeah I wonder uh, like add more about the challenge we face. As me and the oldest among the three of us, mm -hmm. I have some pro I had some problems with technology. Even when I was doing my PowerPoint, I I know how to collect the information from the students and uh, conduct a survey from the students, uh, calculating everything. But I have the problem is like how to make bar graph. So I have never done that. I don't often use Excel. Then I like talk to my daughter, and she she helped me like control my computer from uh, Toronto and showed me how to do it. And then finally, I made the bar bar graph, like make the make the PowerPoint more attractive, more direct, like like uh, explain clearly the information clearly. And. Uh, I'm really appreciate uh, this project, uh, our group, group project, and uh, I know this like this project is conducted at that background. But at the beginning, we choose this one that because we noticed that lots of students struggling with math, especially those with calculation, and the lots of students drop out of school even because of this. So we did pre-survey uh, among 35 nursing students and we also did a uh, post survey and uh, after our presentation and uh, from the pre-survey we find out what what barrier they faced and then we can like uh, design our presentation after the presentation we want to know what the learning outcome uh, what they have learned from our project and what we have learned. And uh, we did a post survey and collected and uh, about 100% students said they, they, they were more aware of the importance of the safe dose with calculation. And uh, about 90% uh, students, they, they said they strongly agree that they have learned how to be successful in safe doses calculation. So our two instructors in class, Foundation two instructors, they said that we really gave very good tips to the, our peer students. So we are really very uh, happy uh, about that. And uh, after our presentation, and lots of students show their interest and they bring some questions to us, and we are we were very positive to answer the question 
and try our best to help them. And uh, in our future practice, uh, I think we will continue to like uh, update our uh, numerous skills and hopefully we can help our patients and give more quality of medical care to our patients. Thank you very much. Uh, do you have anything to add, Anna? Mm, I think everything is said. Well, like, uh, actually, like, I just want to add before we're going to end, like, uh, we have talked to one of the instructor, like, it was much better idea if we're going to teach, like, all, yes. all, all the, yes. all the yes. class, but unfortunately, with our schedule, it's really yes. impossible. Yes. For future reference, numeracy, like, it's for all PN students who are starting, it's going to be hard for them, and this project would be really helpful. And we're gonna put it in D12, yes. So that if you guys or anyone who's watching this video want to have some guidance or some 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 small examples, mm -hmm. our presentation would be some probably some help with you. And yeah. And, and, it's, and I have like three students that ask us for my email address, like if they can. Yes, they, I need to give them the my email address. Yeah, because they need like, help them, I, I gave like, I yes. gave my email address so if they want help with the formulas, like because I have I have my own formula the base uh, the it's not the, the basic formula but it's more like easier to remember. So they're like they're checking their answer at the same time. So they're like my my kind of style. So they ask my email address and then like okay, just I tell them like if you need help, you can just contact me to my email. So yeah, so basically if you have any questions, we can put our information in D12 too, but our presentation will be posted there. So yeah, just ask anything regarding numeracy. Yeah, so both. like if you really have time, because the video, the presentation needs to be like at least 20, 30 minutes, I can, I really wanna help them, with, I really wanna teach them like the whole, like the all formulas, but because of the time limit, I didn't do it like the whole, the whole formulas, but, I'm willing to, you know, to teach them if they are like, just through my email, just email me. So, it was really a good experience. Yeah, like, we yeah. already very appreciate our yeah. instructors because uh, uh, in the process of the project, we like have a lot of contact to our instructors. Yeah, yeah it's and, like a, it's it's really a good practice. Like, yeah, because we are doing teaching, right? It's like a patient we need to do the patient teaching as like so we feel like we are more com confident and comfortable like teaching like our patients and like students so it's a, it's a good experience yeah okay anything else i think we're, we're good <laughs> yeah okay. yeah so, thank you so much so that's our video regarding our yeah. uh what we learned strategies the challenges and what uh we can say regarding our project uh thanks for listening and have a good day. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye.